the very f first place in scripture that we read the term Jehovah Jireh is in Genesis 22, a story most of us are pretty familiar with. And to be honest, it's a story I've struggled with a lot. It's a story of the ultimate test that Abraham will ever have to go through. Remember it when God asks him to take his son Isaac and sacrifice him atop of the mountain as a burnt offering. If I found this story hard to wrap my heart around before I had a son, it's much more difficult after Christian was born. I questioned God, why would you ask him to do that? But as I began to study this promise that God will supply all our needs, I felt the Holy Spirit say, Sheila, take another look at that story. So I did. I'd always imagined that at that point when Abram and Isaac are going up the mountain, that Isaac was a young boy, but most biblical scholars agree that Isaac at this point is between 20 and 30 years old. And what that tells us, there's no way that Abram, who would have been at that point either 120 or 130 years of age, there's no way he could have forced a man in his prime to lie down to be tied on an altar. Abram must have said to Isaac, Isaac, lie down. And Isaac must have responded, yes, father. Why? Why would Abram ask it? And why would, ask, why would Isaac do it? Well, by this point in his life, God had a track record with Abraham. And Abraham knew, he knew as deep as the marrow in his bones that God is not man that he should lie. God had told him that through this boy, Abraham's descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. And Abraham believed God. I find it interesting that Abraham said, the boy and I will go up to worship and then we will come back down. Worship. As I've thought and prayed over that choice of word, it's clear to me that sometimes the greatest act of worship is to be willing to put our dreams to death to embrace God's plan. Abram knew even if he had to put a dagger in his son's heart, God was able to raise him from the dead. So in complete confidence, although I'm sure with agony in his heart, Abram lifted up his arm and God stopped him. I want to read just a couple of verses from Genesis 22. I'm reading um, at verse 12. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Don't hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You've not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abram looked up and saw a ram caught by its thorns in the thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abram named the place Yahweh Yaira, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. When I read that, do you know what I remember? There was another hill where another son walked up the hill and didn't get to come back again. Jesus, the perfect lamb of God, walked up onto the hill of Calvary. And there we see what it looks like. There we see what Jehovah Jireh looks like. The Lord will provide. In Christ, he provided the ultimate sacrifice. He is a source of everything. He's a source for salvation. He's a source for our daily bread. Whatever you are going through right now, whatever you need is found in Christ. God didn't hold back his only son. He gave everything so that you and I could have everything. Don't settle for what this culture tells you you need. You find everything you want in relationship with God.